Hey everyone, this is Mr. Miller. Um, what we're learning about in this video is the actual how the physical Holocaust happened, not the why, but how, like how did all this kind of happen? Like how did, you know, Jewish people and other undesirable groups get lumped into a concentration camp? So the learning targets are, I can understand how the Nazis rounded up Jews and other groups of people during the Holocaust. I can understand how horrible the Holocaust was. I can understand the hardships Jews, should say Jews, Jews and other groups faced during the Holocaust. Okay. <clears throat> so the Holocaust is one of the, the, one of the world's, oh my goodness, I am, I need to stop rushing through things. One of the world's worst events is important to know how Jews and other groups of people were rounded up a lot of people in the world today are ignorant and do not know how the Nazis did what they did, which in my opinion is unacceptable. Um, everybody should know about this so this never happens again. When you get to high school and college, it's expected you know all this information on a basic level. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> the leaders of the Nazi party were very smart in a bad way, of course. Um, they knew that they could just, they could not just kill all the Jews right away. They also knew they could not move them all right away either. Um, this caused them to work very slowly and secretly. Even though that Germany was taking over countries, the big powers of the world, like England, France, the United States, they were not aware of what would happen because if people were to find out about this, if they lost the war, which they did, there would be a lot of troubles. So when the war first started, <clears throat> Germany started taking over the over countries. The Nazis were actually really nice to the Jews. This was them to lure them to a false sense of security. There was lots of Jewish people who were like, oh, well, they're not that bad. Yeah, they don't like Jews, but like they wouldn't do anything bad to us. And um, the German soldiers and Nazi officials and stuff like that were actually very nice and kind, but it was all very fake. After a few months or years, depending on the country, the Nazis took the first steps towards exterminating the Jews and other groups. So loss of rights. The first thing the Nazis did was to take away the rights of Jews. The Nazis uh, made laws that required Jews to wear a yellow star of David on them at all times. Jews were the, uh, without the star could go to jail or be beaten or killed. And it looked like this. So it's just very simple. Jude in German means Jew. Uh, the Nazis also closed all Jewish businesses and forced all Jews to live in a cramped, crowded area of a city called the ghetto. Ghettos would house thousands of people. In reality, that could only house maybe 100 people. Jews were typically not allowed to leave the ghetto. So there's a lot of like stink and disease and you know people dying and death in these ghettos because they just couldn't get out. And germs traveled through the ghetto a lot and made a lot of people sick and die. Um, movement to concentration camps. After time, the Nazis would move random groups of Jews to random, in random cities. One day, the Nazis would come to the ghettos and make certain uh, Jews leave their houses and stand in the courtyard or street for legitimate days without food or water. They did this so other countries would have no idea what was going on. Eventually, a train arrived and took them to a concentration camp. Train cars were cramped, and people often died on the trip from the heat. On the right is a picture of a cattle card. So, like the, these cars here were meant to put cattle or cows in them. And they put human beings in them and they would put more human beings than cows, like within the car up to the limit. Like there would be no room for people. Uh, most Jews at the time thought the Nazis would not kill or hurt anybody. They were just moving them around. They were sadly mistaken. This is not the case at all. So getting off the train, anybody who survived the train ride was forced off the train and forced to get into two lines. One line was for women or girls. and The other line was for men or for boys. Men and women were in separate camps, which was done to divide families up. After the survivors were put into two groups, there was another line. In this line, Nazi officers checked out to see who was strong and able to work. If a person was strong and able to work, they'd be sent in one direction of the camps to work. If they were weak or old or not able to work, they were sent to another direction or were killed immediately. So working at the camp. Life for the Jews and other groups of people were hard. They were required to work all day long doing tasks that required a lot of strength, a lot of manual labor. Sometimes the task would be something completely not needed, like moving rocks from one side of a field to another. They just had them do busy work to punish them. If people did not work, they would be killed instantaneously on the spot. There was a lot of disease in the camps, and thousands died from different things minus murder. So, like, even if you didn't die from actually being shot or gassed or whatever bad thing the Germans could do to you, you were able to die from simple things like disease or, you know, hunger or dehydration. Uh, <clears throat> when the war first started, the Nazis would just shoot Jews after they dug their own graves, that was the actually the original plan was to like have all the Jews in Europe to dig their own graves and then shoot them and then bury them. That took too long and they realized they needed bullets as well. Um, so they decided just to gas people. It was much quicker and much efficient. They would send Jews into a room. I should say Jews and others, Jews and others into a room that's 
that looks like a shower room and spray it instead of water being sprayed gas like poisonous gas was sprayed and instead of burying people at this point they burned bodies in giant ovens which is here um they did this so nobody would be able to find the bodies when the war was over there would be so much ash in the air around the camps it looked like it was snowing that's how much ash there was in the air it looked legitimate like it was snowing like it would be um there's eyewitness reports of people that lived near the concentration camps um that would say like it was looked like it was snowing in the middle of summer it wasn't snow it was ash from people um and this here is dr mengele during the holocaust there was a doctor named joseph mengele he was the head doctor of many concentration camps not just one he was fascinating with trying to make the perfect human beings which in his eyes were like blonde hair blue eye people um he would test random people in the camps he would typically would inject people with poison as well as other cruel experiments he loved to study twins as well as other ethnic minority groups um he was personally responsible for the millions of you know millions and millions of people at um, many concentration camps. His nickname actually was the Angel of Death. So please do keep that in mind. This man is an evil person and did very many evil things. Uh, towards the end of the war, the Nazi party knew they would lose the Allies. Many of the people in the party were scared because the war, the world would be outraged by how the Nazi treated the Jews or other groups. The Nazi army would empty out concentration camps and force all Jews or others to run for days and days until they were out at a camp inside of Germany. Like they would move from Poland or other areas to where there were still had control. Anybody who fell during this march was shot instantly. The concentration camps were all liberated at the end of the war. The Allied armies were shocked by the camps and did not even know they existed until um, they came upon them. So I have some videos here that you should watch if you are watching this later. And don't worry about this assignment question. That's something for later. Thank you very, very much for your time. Have a wonderful day.